Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Brown, man. We're standing here in the sanctuary of Builders of the Faith Community Church. It is Tuesday night, and we're doing something a little different in this season. We are coming together, gathering together on our Tuesday night service to have a time of prayer, a time of worship. I cannot think of a better time for the church to gather together and begin to offer up prayers unto their God in a season like we're living in right now. There is so much happening around the world, in the world, and in people's personal lives that there's a need for us to begin to cry out to our God for him to release his help, his strength, and his direction. And so for the month of September, our church, got, we're gathering together in the sanctuary on our Tuesday night regular service. I know some of you have gotten used to seeing me in the studio. I'm in the sanctuary tonight. We have our worship team and band and minstrels and prayer warriors that are here. 
I want you to go ahead right now and I want you to begin to share this link, grab your mobile device and share this. And I want you to listen to the prayers over and over again throughout this week as it begins to feed your spirit. We've put together several different devotionals that I believe would be a ministering grace to your life and help you through this season that we're in. And I want to share with us a couple of things before we start tonight. When God began to speak to me while I was away about these Tuesday night prayers, I, I really began to cry out to him for direction. And he has always given me scriptures to root um, our actions in. And there's some verses of scriptures that I'm going to read in just a minute. There are nine verses that I'm going to read. And then I'm going to give a few things from those verses. And this is going to be the tone for our prayer time throughout this month. These are going to be the verses that we're going to wrap our hearts around. These are going to be the verses that we're going to use to continue to move forward in this season of prayer. And I want you to hear these verses tonight. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. And allow me to read verses 1 through 9. Verse Chapter 20, verse 1. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Verse 2 says, Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, it is a Hazdamar, which is an ignorant. And Jehoshaphat, verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our father, Art not thou God in heaven, and ruleth not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathens? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? And art thou God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people of Israel, before the before thy people Israel, and gave it to them to thy, to thy seed of Abraham thy friend forever? Verse 8, and they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary for thy name, saying, here's my last verse, if when evil come upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then... Thou will hear and help. Amen. So I want to let these verses begin to speak to you tonight because these are the verses that God has placed in my heart regarding this season of prayer that we're in. And in my mind, I can hear the Spirit just releasing is that we are to set ourselves to seek the Lord. I, I, I want you to, if you will, begin to wrap your hearts around symbolism. And whenever you see symbolism in the Bible, believer, whenever we see symbolism in the Bible, it is meant to help ignite our faith so that we can relate to what is going on and then make application in our own personal lives. And so tonight, out of those nine verses, I want you to see the symbolism and I want you to begin to make application because I'm preaching and praying for somebody tonight. I need you to hear this. Here's the, the first thing I want you to notice. Here's the first thing. That there are times in your life when you're going to feel like you're completely surrounded by enemies. Where there seems to be something happening always in your life. And this is a season that we're living in where people are enduring hardships and affliction. If it's not one thing, it's another. So where you're struggling in your health, then the enemy tries to mess with your mind. And he tries to mess with your family, tries to mess with your finances. And you feel like sometimes... Like Jehoshaphat, that you're surrounded by great enemies who've come from near and far to try to mess with you. And so that's the first thing that God grabbed my heart in because there's some people who are watching here tonight and you feel like you're surrounded by the enemy. 
that everything is breaking off in your life and things are happening in your life. But I'm here to encourage you through these verses because here's the second thing I want you to grab hold to, that fear is real. Jehosh the Bible says that Jehoshaphat feared. He was afraid because of the amount of enemies that was coming around him and was surrounding him, was coming against him. Fear is real. And here's the thing that we need to understand. There's a lot of fear going on right now. There's a lot of people who are living in fear and living their lives because of everything that is happening from the pandemic to the loss to the pain to suffering. There's a lot of fear. Fear is real. But here Jehoshaphat also lends to us the answer to be able to combat our fear. Jehoshaphat says he needs to begin to set himself to seek the Lord. Now, I need you to understand that when you hear me say set yourself to seek the Lord, that is be intentional. That you go out of your way to connect to God in such a way that God gives you exactly what you need. That you are intentional on seeking him. How did he do? He not only prayed, they began to call a fast. And I reached out to several people and I said, hey, let's make Tuesday a day where we're fasting. We're fasting and praying. We are going to be intentional in this season about seeking God because we need God to answer us. We need God to respond to us. And so here's the fourth thing. They gather together. I know that that seems weird in a season like this where we're spaced, spaced out and social distancing, but you need to hear there's something about people getting together and praying. There's something that shifts in the atmosphere when we gather together and begin to pray and begin to call on the name of the Lord. There's something that shifts. And this is what the enemy is afraid of, is that the people of God begin to understand the power of us gathering together. And I know that you might be in your living room. I know that you might be driving on your way to work. But there are a few people in here tonight that have gathered together, not for any other reason than to connect to God. And we're praying for God to begin to move in your life. We believe in God for yokes to be broken in your life. We're believing for God to bring deliverance in your life. We're believing for God to bring healing in your life. That tonight the church has united to begin to pray. And we're going to believe God for breakthroughs to take place. And during the month of September, as we begin to set ourselves to seek the Lord, as we begin to become intentional about seeking after God, that everything that we begin to say, everything we begin to do, is begin to become intentional towards seeking our God. Oh, my Lord, you're going to get your breakthrough. Yeah! You're going to get your healing in this season. I'm preaching to somebody. You're going to get the strength that you need. I came here tonight just for you. I came here tonight just for you. I came, I I said, I came here tonight just for you. I came here tonight just for you to let you know that God is going to move on your behalf. That God is going to answer your prayers. We're going to set ourselves to seek the Lord. Oh. Now let me encourage you before we go into worship. Jehoshaphat in verse 9 says something unique that I want to try to get us to press into a, an area of faith. You got to catch this. You got to catch what he says. He says, we stand before this house. Thank you, Jesus. Thy name is in this house. There is something about gathering in the house of God. In his house, his name is in this house. And so throughout this month, I want to encourage you to make the effort to make your way into his house to receive from him. Will you begin to share the link? The worship team is coming. We're going to have a worship. We're going to have worship tonight. We, we're going to sing the presence of God. Sing unto the presence of God. Sing to an audience of one. We're believing God for breakthrough, so open up your heart wherever you're at. Whether you're here or not, let's begin to engage the presence of God. And after, they're going to sing a song, and then the first prayer warrior is going to come up and pray. Come on, worship team, let's set an atmosphere. Put your hands together. I believe God's going to meet us here. Bless your name, God. Yeah. God, we thank you. Yeah. 
Father in heaven, we know you by many names and many titles. One such example is that you are a healer, Jehovah Rapha. Oh God, thank you. Thank you, God. Lord, I want to pray for healing on behalf of myself and the community. There are those suffering from physical disease while others are troubled by mental disorders. Where you desire healing for us, Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. And John is saying, a healthy mind produces healthy emotions. And healthy emotions lead to a healthy life, life choices. Lord, we thank you, God, that he says your emotions your soul, he says, that you will be in health as your soul. Your soul encompasses our emotions, our will. If our soul is sick, our body is sick. And sometimes we make choices and we do things, God, that we don't want to, but God, we wonder what is the problem. He said, your soul needs to be in health. The soul encompass so much God and until we get it and prosper doesn't mean money it means health it means able to do things make right choices your choices determine your lifestyle he said well we desire healing for us where well, you desire healing for us I pray that you will bring such into our lives and say help us to Ike to eat and behave in a way that will facilitate the healing. We can't put it all on God. You can't keep coming to God. God, we can't keep coming to you and we want to do what we want to do. Father God, we pray tonight, God, that you draw us in, Father God, into the boundaries that you would have us be, God, that we would want you more than these. Father God, whatever these may be in our lives, it is not of you, Father God, we ask that we surrender, we yield, we give it up to you, God, that you may be glorified in our thinking, in our actions, in our bodies. Father God, even in our love, everything is healthy, God. When we give it to you, Father God, we repent before you in all heaven, God, for the thanks we have made it. Forgive us, oh God. Father God, let us realize, Father God, that you, oh God, want the best for us. And we got to want it too. I ask that you will restore our bodies and minds, and that with each miracle, your name will be glorified. Lord, help us today as we stand before you. Father God, health and wholeness is your will for us. For every area of your life, our lives, you want us to be whole. You want us to be healthy. And Father God, even as I stand today, I thank you, Father God. God, I pray for health in your body, in the church, God. In the body of Christ, God, we pray for health. Father God, we ask you to forgive us for what we have made it, our theology, our ideas, our wants, our desires. God, everything we have made it, that's not of you. God, forgive us. And we ask for healing in the body of Christ. Father God, for you say it. When Solomon prayed to you in 2 Chronicles, and Solomon said that there'll be drought, that there'll be pestilence, and there'll be all this, God, every kind of sickness, whatever is going on, God. Father God, he asked for healing. 
And you came back, God, and you answered him. You said, if I shut up heaven, if I send pestilence, if I send famine, but God, you gave us the answer. You gave us the answer, Father God, that of my people, your body, your church, God, Father God, and we would humble ourselves. This wasn't the world you was talking to. This was a church. You said of my people, God will humble themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked ways. Father God, we repent for ancestors. God, the things that have been taught from generation to generation, the hatred and the prejudice and the racism and the ignorance, God, that's been passed on from generation to generation. We ask for healing tonight. God, we repent. We repent, God, for what we have made it. And Father God, we ask that your body, your body, your body of believers, God, that we can come together in Jesus' prayer. As he was in the cross, he said, God, I pray that they be one. As we are one, we pray for unity. God, we pray for unity in the body. We pray for unity in the body of Christ, God, because we have the power in you, God. Father God, that we can make things right. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, oh God, for what we have made it. But tonight, God, we thank you for another chance to get in your face, to seek your face. Father God, to cry out to you for the answer. God, that we can have healing. Healing in this land. God, we have pestilence. We have plagues. We have disease. We have sickness. We have confusion. We have strife. We have division. God, we got all kinds of sickness going on. But you say that we get it together. Oh God, you would heal the land. Thank, thank you, Father, for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for your love towards us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father God. Forgive us, oh God. And God, heal the church. Heal the body, your body. God, that we can be what you call us to be. And we pray it in the name of Jesus that your name would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Say your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Come on, tell them and fill the atmosphere. Say your glory. Anyone want to fill it up tonight? 
Nothing worth more. No one could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. <laughs> I feel Jesus in this room. Your presence, Lord. Yeah. I love this. Watch all this hands that I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of love, where my heart, where my heart, heart becomes free, and my shame, and my shame, I taste it and see, and see it, the sweetest of love, my heart becomes free, and my shame is under, one more time, I taste it and see it, the sweetest of love. Come flood this place. I feel Jesus. Come flood this place. That's what we want tonight, Lord. Come flood this place. We want you to flood this place. Flood our hearts, flood our homes, Lord. Oh, flood this place. I want you to do it tonight, Lord, say, come flood this. Flood this place. Come lift it up again. Flood this place. Flood it up. Flood this place. Come flood this place. Come flood this place. Oh. Flood this hey. place. Come flood this place. Come flood. Come flood it. Flood this place. Flood it with your healing, Lord. Flood it with your power, Lord. Flooded with deliverance, flooded with prosperity, flooded on. Yeah. Come flood this place. Come on, say. Flood this place. Flooded with your power tonight. Yeah. Flooded on.
There are so many other things that we could want, but we want your glory. We want to be overcome. <laughs> I want to be overcome. I want to be overcome. I, I feel an anointing dropping in this room. I want to be overcome. I want to be overcome. I want to be overcome. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. You can make us free. You can make us, I feel, a young breaking anointing here. You can make us free. You can do it. You can make us free. You can make your time. You can make us free. 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 want to please your heart, oh God. We just want to be where you are, Father. And so tonight we ask for guidance. Father, I want to pray for myself and others like me who are either lost or confused. I want to pray for those who are in need of for those of us making major decisions, who to marry, where to go to school, whether or not we should become pastors, I ask that you speak to us through your word and other believers. Reveal your will to us. Assayage our confusion and despair. Help us to see the path laid out and to walk in your name. So Father, we humbly come before your throne of grace. According to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we trust in the Lord with all our heart. We lean not to our own understanding and in all of our ways we acknowledge you and you will make our path straight. Father, we first and foremost repent, God. And we ask for forgiveness for any lack of trust in you. We repent and we ask for forgiveness for the times where we did not acknowledge you. For the times we decided to go our own way. Father, we ask that you would forgive us. And we come with hearts that are wide open. And we surrender our all, God. Lord, we ask for your guidance. We come before you, Lord, asking for eyes to see and ears to hear. Father, order our steps. Lead 
us and guide us, God, in the way that you would have us to go. God, your word declared that there is a way that seems right. Oh, God, but the end, oh, God, is destruction. Father, we don't want to go the way that seems right. We don't want to go the way that feels right. We don't want to go the way that we think is right. God, we want to be led by you. And so, God, we ask you now that you would lead us and guide us. Father, some of us have major decisions. Some of us have small decisions. Oh, God, regardless, Lord, every decision that we make, it can impact our destiny. It can impact our future. It can impact what it is that you have for us. And so, Father, God, we need you now to lead us and to guide us. Oh, God, we thank you right now that your word declared the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And, God, we thank you tonight for ordering our steps oh God we don't even know what to do we don't even know where to go we don't even know God but you know you know the plans that you have for us and because you know God we can be still and know that you are God because you have the best plan for our lives you have the blueprint the blueprint already for our lives God and we ask you now that you would make every crooked path straight oh God that we can walk in our destiny that we can walk in it what it is that you have for us God oh father we thank you now oh God that everything you do is good and very good and God we thank you father that even when we messed up even when we went the wrong way even when we moved out of fear even when we moved out of disobedience even when we moved out of doubt God we thank you that your grace it is sufficient and that you're the God of a second chance and God of a second and third and fourth chance. We ask that you would once more give us clear direction and order our steps, God. Oh, Lord God, we are want to be anchored. We want to be rooted. We want to be grounded. Oh, God, we pray now that you would incline our ear to hear your heart. God, we ask you now to open the eyes of our understanding that we might be enlightened. God, we ask you now that you would give us vision, give us dreams, give us insight. Oh God, we ask that you shake off God, fear God. Oh Lord God, let our flesh die so that we can be positioned, that we can be properly aligned with you, with your plan, with your ways with the route that you want to take us. Even if it's a detour, oh God, we trust you. Even if we're fearful, we trust you. Oh God, give us, Lord, give us peace to know that you're in control. Help us to trust you more. Even when we can't trace you, help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Father, we are your sheep and we know your voice oh God there are many voices there are many voices but God we pray that you would help us to know your voice and not follow the voice of a stranger oh God don't let us be tricked oh God by the snares and the trappings of the enemy don't let us be tricked God for falling for a lie oh God those that have abandoned the faith those who have laid astray God by false doctrines Lord we ask you now that you would turn them around reroute their steps and bring them back into the ark of safety oh God those Lord who have thrown in the towel God we ask that they would begin to find them Oh, God, right back in the ark of safety. Oh, God, we thank you for your leading and your guiding. Oh, God, you said that many are our land of God. They are the sons and the daughters of God. And, Lord, we thank you for your spirit leading us and guiding us into 
into all truth. And so, God, we ask you for a refilling of your spirit that we may be led the right way. Oh, God, refill us with your precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, oh, God, that we, Father, oh, God, may be sensitive, that we, Father, may be more discerning to know what is of you and what is not of you. Oh, God, give us, Lord, give us an ear to hear you like never before. Oh, God, we just sang, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. So, Holy Spirit, we're welcome. But we welcome you to lead us. We welcome you to guide us. We welcome you to take control. We surrender all. We take our hands off, God. And we thank you, Father, for the faith to know, God, that you are in control. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, God. You came that we may have life, and that we may have life more abundantly, God. Father, that as you lead us and guide us, we will walk in that abundant life. We will walk in that wealthy place. We will walk in healing as you lead and guide us, God. We thank you for even the practical ways that you want to lead and guide us, even through people. God, you speak through your man of God. You speak through your pastor. You speak through your people of God. And we ask you now, Father, that you would help us to have ears to hear the instructions that you give them. Oh God, help us to seek out wise counsel that we may have clear direction. Oh God, in this season, there's so many choices. There's so many things that we could do, Father, and we don't want to do it without you. We don't want to make one step without you. We don't want to go outside of your will. So God Almighty, speak to us. Lead us and guide us. And it is all these things we pray in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
Come all you who are thirsty. Come to the waters, you who have no money. Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the riches of fare. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I'm praying about the restoration and I'm going to read um, what I've been tasked to read and my dear sister earlier sisters and pastor have been saying something about repentance and all restoration starts with repentance God I have been troubled by the amount of things I have lost recently in life relationships money stability I want to ask why I want to know why such troubles could befall me when I try so desperately to live as you desire sure some of your hearts are saying that in this season but this writer says help me to see beyond my own suffering Remind me of your care, your provision, and of your deliverance. God, despite what my heart says, you have not forsaken me. So I ask that when you are ready, that what has been taken away be restored. Father, we thank you for this sweet hour of prayer that calls us from a world of care and it bids us to our father's throne to make all our wants and our wishes known and in these seasons of distress and grief I thank you Lord that our souls have often found relief Because of your presence, we oft escape the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Father, pastor has asked, has preached, do it again. And God, I ask you to do it again. And I will be specific that you'll give us a memory to remember what you've done before. You've restored before. God, in times of battle, in times of testing and trial, God, we have a tendency of becoming full of amnesia. We forget what you've done. So, Lord, I ask, God, that you'll restore our memory Lord God, I ask that you'll restore, that we will see that you're bigger than our circumstances and our situations. God, I ask that you would restore to us vision to see you even as Isaiah saw you in the temple of and where your glory abounded. God, I pray that you'll restore our eyes. God, that you'll remove from our eyes the cataracts that will cause us to see just what's going on around us and we will miss who you are in your glory, in your power and in your authority. God, I ask that you will touch our minds. Help us to see who you are. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Remind us of your word, Jesus. You said that you would send your comforter and the comfort that we have in knowing that we will be restored because you would bring back to our remembrance. God, help us to remember who you are. Lord, you rebuked the king who you told, ask of me what you will. Ask something that's impossible and he refused. 
He lacked the faith. Isaiah prophesied that a virgin would give birth because you wanted to show your glory and your greatness. So, Lord, we know you're well able. There's no question about your power and your glory. God, we just have a problem with remembering. We see death. We see sickness. We're seeing disease. We see people losing heart. We remember that stuff. But God, help us to remember who you are. Beloved, I'm going to share the word of God. I'm going to pray his word on my way out. Joel 25, 20, Joel 2, 25 through 26. I will pay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm. My great army that I sent among you, you will have plenty to eat until you're full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you're called an outcast. Restore to me, the psalmist says, the joy of your salvation. God, we ask for that. And grant us a willing spirit to sustain us. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs. I'm giving you his word. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm. Plans to give you hope and a future. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus said. Father, we thank you now that we will seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and that you're going to add. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. The Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come on all over the building, wherever you have, put those hands together. Give God a great big praise. Hallelujah. This is a call to arms for the church to return to the house of God, to pray, to seek Father, to cry out to him. God will heal us, hear us from this house and wherever you're at. I want you to hear this to God. We pray for healing. We pray that God would heal your life, heal those areas of your life. We pray for God to guide us. If there's ever a season there where we needed direction, it is now. So, Father God, as and then we just prayed a prayer of restoration. I pray that all of these prayers begin to meet you at the place of your need, your point of need, and that God would continue to do great things in your life. I challenge you to listen again in the atmosphere that we're in. 
We're getting ready to leave tonight. We'll be back next Tuesday praying. The worship team is going to sing us out and create an atmosphere and, and take us right on out. I want you to worship the Lord as you get ready to get out of here. We want you to seal tonight with a seed. You know there are four ways that you can give to this local body. Believers, you can give on Cash App, dollar sign, B-O-T-F-C-C. You can download the Givelify app on your Android or iPhone device and look for Builders of the Faith, and you can give there. You can go to our website, buildersofthefaith.com, and give there. And as always, you can mail in your contribution to 5900 Ricker Road in Jacksonville, Florida, 32244. My wife and I in the church leadership, thank you for your consistent giving in this season. I believe God's going to do great things in your life in this heart. I want you to just open up your heart and receive that. I want you to hear them as they lead us out in worship. Hallelujah. May the good hand of the Lord be upon your life. All of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship, and I will not be silent, Jesus. I will always worship you. Mm -hmm. As long as I am breathing, as long as I've got breath, Lord, I will always worship. I want you to raise your hands as we leave one more time and say, and I will not be silent. I will always, I will lift up my hands and always worship you. Ooh, as long as I am breathing. Everybody say and I will oh, and I Come on say not be
It also says this, that my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. I will always. 